everyone today's art journal prompt is opposites and for my page today i'm going to be working on two pieces of cardstock this is just regular smooth cardstock it's reasonably um heavy heavy weight and i've cut my usual piece of seven by seven and a half inch cardstock into two so it now measures three and a half by seven and a half um, well each piece does and I'm going to be using two different colours of paints I'm going to use this lovely blue here which is matte turquoise these are the Pebio Deco cream paints these are their version of um, chalk paints and I'm also going to be using the matte olive green and I'm just going to apply these with a piece of magic sponge these are just household sponges that I buy from China I'm going to work on my palette um, sorry my acrylic stamping block just to make life easier it's just easier to clean up and in fact actually what I shall do let me just grab a piece of scratch paper to work on to catch any of the the mess let's put that one to one side for it for a second this has got some lovely dendritic pattern on it already so I'm just going to cover the whole of this piece of cardstock in this gorgeous turquoise paint and the reason I'm using these magic sponges is that I just like the texture that these give. It's sort of like a stippled effect, but a very light stippled effect. And I, I really like that. So I'm going to go over the whole of this piece of card with this gorgeous turquoise paint. And then I shall do exactly the same with the green. Now both pages are dry. I've left those to dry naturally um, just because I had to go to the rowing club and pick Samuel up. So I just left them and um, yeah, they dry by the time I've come back. Now I'm going to go over both pages with this burlap stencil and I'm just going to be using a regular makeup sponge because I do find that when using stencils that the magic sponges are not very um, good. So I'm just using a regular makeup sponge for, for this and I'm going to re um, reverse the colours again. So on the blue I'm going to use the green and on the green I'm going to use the, the blue. So I'm going to hold this down and try and get um, a really good coverage. Um, not applying too much paint to the sponge either because um, it's likely to seep underneath the stencil if I put too much paint on. So I'm trying to hold it down flat so that I don't move the stencil, just to hold it in place. Oh. My pieces of cardstock are dry, so I'm happy with that. And I can't make up my mind what I want to do as a focal image. At first I thought I might like to have a key and reverse it like that. Um, but I've changed my mind and I've grabbed another piece of cardstock which I've cut to the same size as this panel. And I think I'm going to draw a flower and I just want to use this as a template. So let's have... And I don't want this to be um, perfect. And I'm going to keep turning um, my paper because I've said this to you before, if you twist your paper, it stops you ending up with wonky um, petals. And I'm pretty happy um, with that kind of shape, I think, because then my stem can go something like, like that. And then I can, if I cut it out, I can reverse it. So I just want to draw my, my leaves. So something like that. And then we'll have some on the other as well I think I'm happy with that so I am going to fussy cut that shape out now I've cut my flower shape out and all I've cut is the flower head and the leaves and I've marked the center point of both of these pieces of um, card as well and what I want to do now is just try and position my flower and just draw draw around it I just want to try and centralize it so there's my center point that's the mark that I've made um, and that's about right but I just want to try and tilt it because on one side I want my stem coming down on that angle and then I shall reverse it and have the stem 
going in the opposite direction on the other flower. I hope that makes sense. In fact, I think I want it like like that. In fact, I think that's that's about right. So I am going to draw around this because I can fiddle fiddle with this and then I shall paint it once I've drawn around my template. This is just to give me the shape. So that's how it looks. That's how it's traced on the one side. That's my cent centre point. I don't know whether you can see that little pencil mark that I've made there. So I'm just going to flip it like that and then my stem will go that way on the one side and that way on the other side. And so I am just going to draw, oh, let me just line it up, draw around, around that. Now, I don't know whether you can see this, I've got my flowers drawn out on both sides. There they, there they are. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to draw my stem that way. And then I want to draw my stem in the opposite direction on the, the other flower. So there we go. So I am happy with that. Then what have I done with my leaves? Then my leaves, I need to sort of mark a, a point where they're symmetrical. Let me have a look. I think I quite like having them about there. So I'm going to draw around this here. Oh, whoopsie daisy. There we are. And so let me just have a look and see if I can, I've got my ruler here. What I will do is make sure I've got those pieces of paper even and then I'll draw a line so that I know, there we go, that my leaves are going to go round the other way. That's it. And that's how they'll be positioned on the other, the other side. There we go. Now the other thing I've decided to do, because I've got the oval of my centre of my flower there, I've drawn another oval and I'm going to cut that out as well just so that I can mark my centre because I do want the centre of my flower to be a different colour to the colour that I choose, which I haven't decided on yet, of my flower. So I'm just going to fussy cut this again just so that I can get this completely symmetrical. OCD or what? Oh, good grief, good grief, Nina, Nina, Nina. So right, I'm going to draw around that and then flip it and draw the circle on the other side. I've decided to use white to colour my flowers and I've got a couple of different paintbrushes. I've got this angled one here, which is new and I've never used, that's a Dale Rowney, and I've got this Royal and Langnickel um, paintbrush as well. And again, I've put my, my paint on the palette here. Right, let's move that one out of the way. Let's do one at a time. Do you know what? I think what I'm going to do is add some gesso to start off with. Right, change of plan. Let me grab some gesso. Oh, I just wiped that white paint off with a baby wipe and I've put some white gesso here on a smaller palette. I'm hoping that white will stay, the white paint will stay liquid long enough so that I can still still use it. So I'm just going to trace around this with the white gesso like, like this. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to add some scribbly lines anyway, but I want to be reasonably neat. And so I'm going to go around all of the petals in the white gesso Okay, so I've done the flower and I'm now going to do exactly the same thing with the leaves. And at this um, stage, I'm leaving the centre of the flower as it is. Um, but I'll come back to that later once I've decided what I'm going to do. 
Right, so both sides of the page have had a coat of gesso and I've worked quickly and gesso dries really quickly anyway. So I'm just going to go over the top. Let's do one at a time. This is the one I did first with some white paint. And just try and get it to look nice and smooth and it might take a couple of coats but that's okay that's fine now this has had probably three coats and um, in the end as well i ended up with this ring uh, around the centers and so i just used brush marks going outwards as well just to try and um, smooth it out a little bit now i've still got some white paint on my palette here and i've added some lime green as well which one's this this is the reeves lime yellow <coughs> excuse me i just thought um this might add a touch of brightness to to this page as well I've gone over that with the green and now i want to introduce some of that white as well just to give it a little bit of um shading and to you know just really tie these two colors into in together can you see what i'm i'm doing now that's pretty much dry and i've mixed together the leftover paint here and i think i just want to add some to the center i've got a jar of water here as well i really want this to be sort of like a, a light light wash just to add some detail to the center that's perfect absolutely perfect let me just move that out of the way a second so my paint's dry and i'm happy with that and so i just want to draw in my stem i want it to be really loose and scribbly like like this and then i'm going to add some doodles around the leaves and the flower like this just really loose scribbly lines there we are. and I shall do this on both flowers all the way all the way round so I've continued adding my scribbly lines and then I've taped my pages together as well just using some masking tape and so I think that's how I want them to be and then border wise I think I'm going to use one of these Mayped gelato style um, crayons so I'm just going to add some black to the outside of the page like like this and then just smudge that yes that's the kind of smudgy smultry look I'm looking for so I just want it on the very very edge and so here we are here's this week's finished page I've added a few finishing touches I've added some doodling using a white Posca paint pen this is one of the really fine tipped pens so I added some doodling to the centre of the flowers and to the leaves and just added some white scribbly lines as, as well. Found the perfect quote, do what you love, love what you do, um, which I found in the Tim Holtz um, Small Talk book. And that is pretty much it. I, there's something really appealing about the simplicity of this page that I just really like. Um, it just looks so crisp and, and clean. So let me know what you think too. But as always, I just look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to do for this week's prompt um, opposites um, if you like this I'd really appreciate a thumbs up because as I always say it just lets YouTube know that you like what I'm doing and take care everyone I'll see you all again soon bye for now